All right, Jets fans, it's simple. The New York Rangers have made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. That means one of the draft picks we received for Andrew Kopp will turn into a first-round pick. The Winnipeg Jets had a condition on the 2022 pick that says, if Andrew Kopp played 50% of the games, check. And if the New York Rangers made the Eastern Conference Final, check. Winnipeg's second-round pick, because we got two for him, ends up becoming a first-round pick. Now, obviously, the Rangers are a top-four team, so this isn't going to be the world's highest pick. It is either going to be pick 32, 31, 29, or 28, but there are a lot of prospects worth noting here. Number one, this is a very deep draft, so you heard me say it before. In the NHL draft, a top five pick is like gold. Here's a small little graph from The Athletic that shows you the success of draft picks. You can see down below here on the x-axis, it's the draft pick number. And on the y-axis, we end up looking at how successful that draft pick is going to be by game score value add. What does that mean? It means the player is going to be good or not in their first seven years. So you can see here, here's a first overall. Here's the second overall. And then here's the top five pick. They're all kind of hanging out in this crappy drawn domino that I ended up showing. That's why I say top five picks are absolute luxuries and then we just draw kind of a little crooked straight line here because we know it's pick number 32 it's no longer just pick 30 so anything over here on this side of the line this is a first round pick and how successful they are you can see it is a steep exponential curve so what does that mean when you're drafting at the back of the first round it's not the best draft position but when you consider it compared to the rest of the NHL draft it's actually pretty good so these are your players you're going to be looking at somewhere around the back half of the first round of the draft draft and then the graph slowly starts to get flatter and flatter and what does this tell us as well too well realistically the only draft picks that are worth anything are first and second round picks these are the only guys that have a real difference in them the third round pick which is right here actually has a little bit of a difference in it in terms of success but realistically once you exit out of the second round pick number three or round number three I should say all the way to round number seven it's all pretty much the same you have a 15 to 20 percent chance at best to get an NHL player out of any one of those rounds so Winnipeg ends up acquiring an extra second they end up acquiring an extra first why I say this is important this right here this x marks the spot that's where we would have been drafting if the Rangers didn't end up making it to the Eastern Conference Finals now we end up moving up somewhere over here so we've moved up the graph we're moving on up that's where you want to go Look, it's not a massive difference, but it is a big enough difference that it can change a franchise. So it's a nice little bonus for us to get. Thank you to the New York Rangers. Great job by Andrew Kopp. The next big question that's going to be is, are any of these players any good? Well, let's head over here to Yahoo. They actually have one of the most updated draft rankings that we can go ahead and pick. So as we flip over to the Yahoo News, look, there's a lot of different areas out there that talk about scouting, but the teams are going to have their own choices here. Let's take a look at a few highlights here from number 20 all the way down to 32. You can come read this yourself. I actually know some of these players. I've coached against or with some of these players. Denton Machachuk is the first player here. I've actually coached against this player. I've had him on summer teams. This guy is a beauty. Now, he's ranked at number 20, so the odds of him falling to us are low. But I can tell you, this is a big, nasty, young defenseman. He's very calm along the blue line. He may not be a Kale McCarr type name, but he is an absolute beauty back there. He can drive offense at even strength. He's also a very good quarterback power play. They're calling it. I'm calling it. He's a quality man. He's a quality pick. If this guy ends up falling, I'd love Winnipeg to take him. But Winnipeg's got a real problem not taking players from Winnipeg or Manitoba. They're in their own backyard. Kevin Dayoff doesn't want him. He passed on Seth Jarvis for Cole Perfetti. Hey, I love Cole Perfetti too, but we all just saw what Jarvis did. He went beast mode there with the Carolina Hurricanes, taking them through. He's one of their best players. He's already on the top line. What are we doing? Draft the kids. Draft the guys we built. The next year after that, we end up taking Chaz Lucius. Look, jury's still out on this one. But we had a guy named Carson Lambos in there who is in the middle of one of the best WHL seasons with one of the best WHL teams in the league, the Winnipeg Ice. Many of you from Winnipeg have gotten a chance to see him play. He was considered a top five locked pick before an injury and a few unfortunate events. He ends up falling to number 23 to our rivals 
oh my god, the Minnesota Wild. So we take Chaz Lucius, we take Cole Perfetti. Both could end up being dynamo players. Perfetti is a dynamo player. Who are we kidding? But I still think Jarvis was the pick. Why? Because now all of a sudden you can have a guy like Lambos and you can have a guy like Jarvis on a bus or on a bench selling tickets. That's what happens. Local guys sell tickets, especially when they're amazing. And these are two amazing players. So Perfetti, awesome. Lucius, cheering for him, but it would have been pretty cool to see the two Winnipeggers side by side. Hey, you want to go ahead and see what one of our first round picks could end up turning into our own first round pick? How about Connor Geeky from the Winnipeg Ice? You could have had three back-to-back -back Winnipeggers at that point in time. Geeky's a beast. He's a big man. He's got to work on some of his skating, but he's definitely a prospect to keep your eye on that the Winnipeg Jets may draft. But the history says they pass on Winnipeg guys and they go reaching globally. Again, when you have all these opportunities to scout in your own backyard, I'm not sure why you don't do it. The only reason I say this too, and you got to understand, I'm a little bit biased with this. I've seen all these players firsthand that I'm mentioning right now. I've got to work with them from age 12 up to age 16. At some point in their career, they've either played against me or they've gone ahead and played for one of my teams that I ended up coaching. And these guys are awesome. I got a pretty good eye for the game. So those three names that I gave you are pretty great. Denton Matechuk joins that list. So maybe he falls, maybe we get lucky. Scrolling down the list, you're going to see a few United States National Development Program teams. We know we are really close to taking players from this. So maybe Rudger ends up falling. There's a couple players here overseas from Czechia, from Slovakia. We got Nason Gocher from the QMJHL. Look, he's a big, tall man. He's a six foot three. He's going to be enticing to a team based on his size and he's a power forward. We know we need some forwards to come in, especially to replace Andrew Cobb. We've got a player over here in the SHL. We've got a player over here in the MHL. That's a Russian player just below the KHL. Another SHL player here. But I want to go a little bit lower. You can come read this list as you want to read it. I'm not as familiar with these players as I am with the Canadians and the Winnipeggers. Of course, I'm going to be familiar with those that play in Canada. But as you end up coming down here, what you're going to see is one that may draw a lot of attention is Jimmy Snugard. We know we love to draft our Americans up here. For some reason, the number one scout in the Winnipeg Peg Jets is clearly the one who is scouting down in the States. So he's a point per game player. We saw him at the World Juniors. This is a very effective player except his skating, but we always take an opportunity to take a player who's a bad skater. I don't agree with it. I think you should be taking the best skater. I don't believe on working on skating. I think players are pretty capped at 18 and 19. You can improve them slightly from 19 to 25, but I think when you're relying on a player to improve his skating in order to become better, that's a questionable tactic in my mind, but keep your eye on Snoogard. We can end up taking him, and the reason I say, by the way, skating is a questionable tactic to improve, it's pretty much set by the time you're 15. It's the most important aspect to the game. If you can skate, you can play this game. Why is Seth Jarvis so good? He was the best skater in that draft. And you guys saw it in the playoffs. The guy's beast mode when it comes to moving his feet. What he can do with his feet, with his puck at speed is incredible. You can teach someone better puck handling at speed. Very hard to teach someone to improve their speed. So, look, I'm not a big believer in drafting guys that aren't good skaters, but Snugard is a guy to look out for. Matejchuk is a guy to cross your fingers. Hope he falls. Go ahead, read the article down below. Jets fans, like, subscribe. Why are you not here? We cover the best in the NHL, and we're a hometown boy, so join our channel if you haven't already. Hopefully that gives you some previews for what you can look forward to this year.